Θα ήθελα λοιπόν κατευθείαν να καλέσω τον πρώτο μιλητή, ο οποίο είναι ένα συνάδελφο από την Google, Χαβιέ Ντελγκάντο, είναι ηγείται τη ομάδα του Travel για, την, για ένα κομμάτι τη Ευρώπη και θα σα μιλήσει για τι έξι βασικέ τάσει του Ιντερνετ και θα φέρει πολλά παραδείγματα από το χώρο του τουρισμού. Χαβιέ, please. Thank you. Thank you, Stefanos. Thank you, uh, Grigoris, and thank you, Dimitris, for having me today. And thanks for this great audience. It's a pleasure to be in Greece. It's not the first time I'm in. It's not the first time I'm, I am in this beautiful country. Um, I used to work for an online company called Expedia, and I used to look after the Greek market for a number of years. So it's always good to be uh, back here. Thank you to the Ministry of Tourism and to the uh, Visit Greece Association for their presence as well. So when I was invited to join uh, you all today, I was asked by the Greek travel team to share some of the views of where the internet is going. So I would like to spend the next 20 minutes giving you an idea of the trends that we have identified around the internet globally and what they mean to the travel industry. I happen to run a team that is uh, European, European, Middle East and Africa, but I'm, I'm Spanish and I'm based in Madrid. So like in Greece, tourism is a very important industry for our economy. And we've been through rough times. It seems like things are getting better. And the sum of internet and tourism have been really important to get the country or start to get the country out of the crisis. So before you start, just Quick disclaimer, predicting the future is always difficult. As you can see here, the quote from Mr. Albert Einstein, or this quote from Steve Ballmer, with all due respect to Microsoft, the day the iPhone was launched, Mr. Ballmer said that it would be a total failure. It seems like both of them were a bit wrong when predicting the future. So with that in mind, let's start with the first trend. Content is exploding. If we look at the amount of information that is being generated every day, we see that since humankind started till the year 2003, is the same amount that, are now, that is now being generated every six hours on the internet. Think about this for a second. The ex content is exploding and it's exploding all over the place. If we look at the difference between the main um, number of hours, so the, the metric used to um, measure how, many, how much content is being uploaded, in only four years in YouTube, which is the second biggest search engine in the world, this has grown by a factor of 5x. If we look at the social network, in the same amount of time, just four years, also 5x. Content is growing, and content is growing at a very, very, very fast pace. Talking about travel specifically, everyone knows here about TripAdvisor, or should know about TripAdvisor by today, especially the hotels. 17 million pictures uploaded every year. 80 reviews created every single minute. So in the next 20 minutes, we're talking about 1,600 reviews that will be uploaded into the internet. And all of that is because the users want to know more. Content is king and content is exploding. People expect to see the room before they go to the hotel. Sometimes they know more about the hotel than ourselves. Clear example, I was actually in Barcelona this morning meeting with the Accor management board, and Accor has been at the forefront of innovation on this front. Since two years ago, they have been able to upload videos for all their singer properties. But that's just one example. If we look at other examples local here in Greece, we can see companies like Airfast Tickets. Airfast Tickets has done a fabulous job. In the month of February, for the first time ever in Google history, they took over five mastheads in a row increasing traffic by 35%, increasing sales by 20%. This is an example of how the environment is changing. And it's not only the international bigger companies, also the local companies. 
So that was the first big trend. Content is exploding. Second, internet is everywhere. It's ubiquitous. I always like to use this slide, which you may have seen, but it's really illustrative of, of what's happening in the world. So five years uh, apart, sorry, seven years apart, each uh, one picture from the other, and it's the election of the Pope on the Catholic Church. Same picture, taken in St. Peter's Rome. You see how the world has changed. Everyone on the last election, last year, was there broadcasting to the world the election of the Pope. If we look at how devices are being connected, you see the blue line, that's, those are desktop devices, traditional computers or laptop computers. But look at the red and especially the green curve, how it's ramping up. Devices are more and more connected. Internet is everywhere. If we take this to the um, travel part, these are the searches for hotels in the United States. One of the most mature markets in the world, if not the most mature market in the world from a technology point of view. You see that soon the lines are going to cross and actually mobile devices are becoming more and more important. But the important here is not the mobile. The important piece is that everything is interconnected and the user is constantly connected because the internet is everywhere. Here you can see how the users are combining the different devices throughout the day. Specific example of this is Agoda. Agoda is a company based in Asia, now a global player, part of Priceline Group, one of the bigger, if not the biggest, travel player on Earth these days. They've seen their tr mobile traffic multiply by a factor of 850. And the order value, which is even more important, they are not only selling more, but they're selling more expensive thanks to the mobile phone. So we've got the explosion of content and internet everywhere, enabled to a, an important extent by the mobile phones. But the third important factor is that internet is becoming local and personal. So internet is not just that cloud where everyone connects, it matters what is important to the people. 30% of the searches are for things around us. How do I get to the Intercontinental Hotel? I actually landed literally 40 minutes ago in the Venizelos airport. I was looking, where is the hotel? How long is it going to take me to get there? Am I going to be late? People are looking for things that matter to them, that matters to us. And that represents one third of the searches on the internet today. If we look at examples of companies that have understood this and taken it to the end level, is Tesco. Tesco is a grocery chain in the UK but also operating in other countries. The example we have on the screen now is actually the uh, metro in Korea. What they've done is they've taken pictures of the hallways in the supermarket and they have posted those in the metro stations. So people can buy while they're waiting for the metro what's important to them. That's local, that's personal because you're doing your own grocery shopping while you're waiting for the metro with the QR codes and that can be delivered to you at night or the day after. Moving now to the travel sector, we can see Uber. Most of you are probably familiar with Uber. If you're not, it's a private driver service company operating uh, not only in the United States, but across the world. They are all offering a black driver service at the price of a taxi. This revolution has only been possible thanks to the mobile phone and making things personal and local for the people. You light up your um, Uber app in your phone and they will send you a car in case there's a car near you. Very safe, very efficient and get more for the same price. If we try to project ourselves to the end limit, we can look at this video now. I'm going to try to play the video. Sometimes it doesn't work. I hope it does work today. But this is actually a projection of where travel can go within a few years from now, thanks to technology. Imagine you wake up oh, in Frankfurt go. in the year 2025. Hi, I'm Epita, your integrated, proactive, intermodal travel assistant. Your flight has been delayed by three hours. 
To make it on time to your meeting in Brussels, please choose alternative transport. Speed train, arrival at office, 2 p.m., all in costs, 800 euro. Or airplane, arrival at office, 3.20 p.m., all in costs, 860 euro. Select alternative. Thank you. Booking is confirmed. Here is your mobile combined ticket. Your taxi will arrive in a few minutes. Have a safe journey. So this is not a Google product, just managing expectations here. But this is something that might be a reality sooner than we expect. And this is powered by mobile phones, by mobile technology. And this is making things work local and personal for the client. If you want to talk about things that are already released, is Google Now. Is a personal assistant in your pocket. These things are changing the world. This morning in Barcelona, on my way to the airport, I knew that my flight was already delayed. The airport staff didn't know at the counter at check-in, and I knew, thanks to Google Lab. If we look at about an example of a hotel chain that is taking this to the maximum, is Starwood. Starwood is one of the leading hotel chains in the world, managing a number of brands, uh, some of them present here in Greece. What they are doing is they're leveraging technology and mobile phones and apps to talk with their customers while they are on their resort, upsell them, cross-sell them, have a conversation between the brands and the hotel operators and the consumers. That was the third point. Internet is becoming local and personal. If we move to the fourth trend, we will see that there's a lot of acceleration in the market. We might think that one week is not a lot of time in the tourism industry. Traditionally, it would be the time you know, that we have the Germans for a week in a tour operator series from Saturday to Saturday, or from Thursday to Thursday. If we think about the digital era, a week is a lifetime. Here you have a few numbers of things that happen in a day. Companies like L'Oréal, French leading company for fast moving consumer goods. Very traditional French company now interacting 2050, uh, 250,000 times per day with their clients through the social networks. Nokia from the Nordics used to be the king of mobile for many years went from a 40% market share to a 5% market share in less than three years. The number of bookings that are made on the internet per week in Greece is substantial. Are you capturing all that demand? Are you capturing the opportunity? That's a question for you. But more importantly, the models are changing. We look, if we look at companies like Tesco that I mentioned before, this is a grocery store. It used to sell groceries and food to you. Now they're selling tablets, films, finance. If you look at Nike, Nike used to be a company selling sports gear. Now it's wearable devices that connect the user, the sportman, with technology. Or Amazon. Amazon is starting selling books. You can now buy absolutely everything in Amazon, from a coffin to a car to a bank account in one place. Moving back to the travel industry, which is what gathers here us today, is these are some of the traditional players, some of them very present and very active, but some of them, like the big tour operators, have been here for 50 years, 60 years, similar to Spain. These people had the airplanes, sometimes they own the hotels, they own the uh, local companies, the incoming uh, tour operators and so forth the GDSs, in no time, these are the new players. This has happened very, very fast. If you look at Airbnb, for example, another great example of innovation, in four years they have created a whole revolution. And I know it's a difficult topic because, you know, hotels are not happy with Airbnb coming in, taxi drivers are not happy with Uber coming into the equation, I know that this, there's tension because many things are being shaken up. But the thing is that users do expect these new models. If we look at players like Hotel Tonight or Airbnb that I just mentioned, these are companies that couldn't exist before because the technology for them to exist was not there. Maybe someone in this room is coming up with a new best idea that is going to be developed tonight or in some garage in Bugliameni or in California. Don't really know, but you have to be 
very vigilant and very wary that change is happening at a very fast speed. To a great extent, because of the four points, the four trends that I mentioned, the users are hyper-informed. Users know a lot more than they used to know. Moving back to the fast-moving consumer goods industry, Procter & Gamble, which is one of the biggest, if not the biggest, um, consumer packaged goods company on earth, they coined the term moment of truth. This is also used in, in hotels and in the hospitality industry. The moment of truth was that first moment of truth where the user, the consumer, was in the supermarket in front of a product that said, your laundry is going to be the whitest if you buy me. That was the moment of truth. Then that user went home and washed the laundry and maybe it wasn't that white. Or maybe it was. But that's when the product came into life and where the promise had to be fulfilled. Thanks to the digital world, there is a new phase in this process which is called the zero moment of truth. And that's users on their couch at home with their digital tablet or their phone browsing the internet to understand what's a product about. Here you have some numbers. The users are becoming more and more sophisticated. They're searching more sites. They're changing from one place to the other. They gather a lot of information. They are hyper-informed. They know a lot. They expect a lot. And they have a lot of power thanks to the digital world. If you think about it from a media consumption perspective, the time spent in the different screens is changing quite a lot. TV was the king since the half, in the second half of the 20th century. Right after the 21st century started, the internet started becoming a big thing. But now, the screens are multiplying. Now you have tablets, now you have phones, and the time spent in those different devices is much more than on TV. Taking this to a travel example, we see TripAdvisor. They have over 130 million reviews, and 50% of those have been generated in the last 12 months. Again, consumers hyper-informed, consumers having more and more power. This takes me to the last trend that we predict or that we see on the internet. Traditionally, marketing and sales had a lot of art. There were art divisions in the, in the companies that would look at the brochures and the pictures. I used to do brochures in a traditional tour operator in the late 90s. It was all about which photo do we choose, what's the greatest view. The hotels were dying to get as a top spot or a prime location within that brochure. The picture, the image, the imagery, the colors were very important. And that's still important today, but it's becoming more and more of a science. If we look at how a marketing department looks today, or should look today, it's more like the stock market. People consuming constant information, looking at constant streams of information, upon which they made decisions to sell more. I'm not going to go through every logo in this slide, but this is the display ecosystem two years ago. It's getting worse. On one side, you have the publisher, and on the other side, you have the advertisers. The level of communication and interaction between platforms is amazing. It's incredibly complex. And as a consequence, it's becoming more and more of a science than an art. This is like the stock market. Most of the CEOs in the world believe that there's not enough data mining and data sharing in companies. IT, which traditionally has held the technology budgets in companies, will soon be surpassed by marketing as the main technology spenders. What the digital world is changing is making a big shift to data. Over 60% of the display will be bought by a programmatic, probably by the end of this year. That means real-time bidding. That means you are buying an audience, you are buying a user, you are buying a cookie, you are buying someone like you specifically, or like me. You're not putting the photo of your hotel or your airline or whatever your company is 
in a newspaper and expect, you know, and pray for the best to hit the right eyeballs. No, you will choose which eyeballs you want to hit. If we take this again to the travel space, here we see an example of American Airlines, traditional US carrier that has been many years in the air. And for something as touchy and as sensitive as a crisis due to a threat, they were able to manage that through Twitter. This is leveraging technology to communicate with your users. This is a scale. To sum it up, we're talking about a content explosion. We're talking about internet being absolutely everywhere. We're talking about an internet that is local and personal, different for everyone. We're talking about acceleration in market changes. If you are uncomfortable, which you should be, you're going to be in more, even more uncomfortable because this is going to change even faster. We're talking about consumers who are hyper-informed and know more sometimes than ourselves about the products that we sell. And we are talking that selling is no longer an art, it's science, it's numbers, and it's data. With that, I would like to thank you all for your attention and for having me today. It's been a great pleasure. Thank you very much, uh, Javier. Just one question thank before you, uh, you go course. down. Uh, Spain, uh, just like Greece, uh, had a huge recession that affected the, the economy. Can yes. you tell us a bit more what Spain has done in the travel industry to attract more tourism and, uh, and uh, help the economy? Yeah. So I used to run, now I run the European team, but in the past I used to run the Spanish travel team. So when we were sitting down with the decision makers and the owners of some of the hotel companies like Melia Hotels International or NH, these are people owning 350 or 500 hotels publicly traded, so with a lot of pressure on results, they realized that Spain was dead, the GDP was dead, the country was dead, there was no spend. Unemployment was up to 27%. You know about this. It's similar to, to what we are living in Spain. What did they do? Most of them, they shifted completely their market mix from being 60-70% exposed to the domestic market and moved that to the international markets. Some companies were able to turn this around in 6 and 12 months making that the vast majority of their investments and their sales on the internet were coming from abroad. And they went to the natural markets, the UK, Germany, we all know who are the big outgoing markets, but they didn't have a presence in those markets, they were not capturing the demand. They were not buying the keywords through Google and other sources. And they did that in a very short time. As a consequence, all of them are now seeing their P&Ls, their, their results, their profitability go up. So that's a clear case of a turnaround that we've seen in the last 12 and eight to 18 months in Spain. Thank you very much, uh, Javier. Thank you.